Welcome back, Big Bass Lovers. It's Demont coming back at you. Um, I've got another 25 days of Christmas order here from Thanksgiving from Tackle Warehouse. Uh, this is kind of like the borderline essential stuff I use. Um, <laughs> it looks like an elephant sat on my box. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, people ask me, like basically, kind of hooks I like to use. I mean. I'll try some stuff on sale, but usually I go with what I know. Um, and I've tried these a few years ago. I mean, I was using more expensive hooks, but then I started going back to Eagle Claw. And more or less, this is one of my, my favorite style Eagle Claws. It's the tube hook. This one's a 3 alt. They make them up to I think a five volt. This is some other ones. This is the Southern Sprout. I mean, as far as a deal, I mean, I will admit, back in the late '90s, early 2000s, Eagle Claw fell off a lot. They just weren't making as good a product as they used to make. Um, a lot of people left them, um, but they have started coming back a lot lately. Um, but this little tube hook right here, as far as you fishing like a small creature bait or something like that, um, like as far as flipping and pitching around and using a tube or a four inch bait, instead of having like a, an EWG, I always try to give them a flex test to make sure it's not a bend. Um, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks so you see the pull point of it. When you're pulling, it has like a natural cam motion. And that hook is super sharp. Um, give me just one moment. Me, I thought for sure I had a five volt in here. Three alt. There's the flipping hook. I like these as well. But I mean, um, and another reason why I like to use these is because I'm not scared to put this. Like these are on sale. Um, I think Tackle Warehouse had these on sale for a dollar. I don't be mistaken, they're like a dollar, dollar seventy-five or something like that, um, or two dollars. Some were cheaper than that, but there's a tube hook that's five volt right there. I knew they had a five volt in here. This works really good for like a four-inch bait. Let's see if you can see this against my hand here. There you go. Um, let me grab a bait real quick just so I can show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's what I'm going to show you with. Alright, so this is a 4.2 inch prong um, by 6 inch. Here's your bait. This is kind of a big bait, kind of bulky. That's why I like having this tube hook. I mean, it's going to sit. You're going to bring it out. You're going to bring it up over the barb. going to come back it's going to sit on there instead of using an EWG this hook right here especially when you're using a snail knot is about perfect and that four inch bait you see how it's sitting there I guess while we're here let me go and show you how to tie a snail knot 
Somebody asked me about this before, and I haven't got around to it. Let me just pull this off. Here's your hook. Let me get me out some line here. Um, if you guys haven't ordered anything from AliExpress, this... I mean, I, you can also find on uh, Digitaka and stuff, this black... Um, they also have it in different colors. But this is the black Daiwa hard nylon. Um, it's a monofilament, but it does have has look at this. It has no stretch to it. <clears throat> I can't really pull it. It has no stretch. It acts more like a braid than it does anything. Okay, so here you go. Here's your hook. You're gonna come through the eye. What I like to do, and I can snail anything, is I bring that straight down beside the barb. Put my hand on that barb and I pinch it and I make a loop. I come over. So my hands will grab it right. <laughs> I grab here, here, here. Just keep coming up the hook bar, the shaft. I usually go six or seven times. All depends on what kind of vegetation I'm fishing or what I'm fishing. I bring it back through the loop. You have to make sure you hold on to it good. I don't have my glasses on, so this is not that easy for me. Then you're going to grab your main line. You're going to pull your main line. There you have a nice, tight snail. Can you see that? Makes a nice, tight snail. And that's my favorite knot for just about any kind of hook I do. Okay, here's this. Let me take it off of this. Give me one second. And I'll show you on a different thing. So this is basically like a traditional kind of flipping style hook. It has that kind of barb on it. But I'm going to show you on another style hook. That you can do basically the exact same thing. Alright, here you go. Here's your sprout, works, sprout hooks. Um, I like these hooks right here, especially if I'm doing like, I call it power shotting, or some people call it bubble shotting. Um, they give, they're kind of really light wire. I use a, they're very sharp. I use, a, uh, oh, ow. I use usually 12 pound fluorocarbon with this. And usually I'm fishing about eighth to um, eighth to a quarter ounce um, drop shot weight. You do it the same way. This is snelling an offset bend. You don't have to tie a polymer or a clinch knot. This actually gives you the same kind of cam action when you have your weight on it. I don't know if I have any weights here. I'll show you that as well. But you're coming straight through. Where it comes to the neck, I pinch it right there. I go up and over, up and over, up and over, up and over, up and over. <laughs> I'm doing up and over a lot, huh? Up and over. Then I have my loop right here. I'm going to bring my tag in back through the loop. I pull that down tight and I pull my main line. There's your nice tight snail on there. And I like a snail knot usually a lot more than almost any kind of knot. For one, you get that awesome cam action. When it pulls, the hook goes straight out like that. But for two, I have rarely ever had a snail knot fail. Knock on wood. I have never had a snail knot break it, I have lose knot strength. Let me see if I can do this. <clears throat> so I'm bending that hook out before I do anything else. Um, I mean, this is, um, I think this is a 16 pound test. I use this black mono on my, my top waters. Um, I like to throw jigs with it in the winter time. Um, sometimes I don't like fluorocarbon in the wintertime. It depends on how cold it is. If it's freezing outside, I'm not using car fluorocarbon. 
um, just has a tendency of breaking. Um, I wish I had a different weight in here right now. I'd show you exactly how that cam works on it, but uh, I don't have that right now. Anyway, I digress. There you go. There's your snail. And you can use this same snail on just any kind of hook you want. Um, you have your worm weight sitting here, and it comes down. And what happens is when you set the hook, that worm weight hits against the snail, and it pops your hook straight out like that. And so instead of, a lot of times you have like a regular traditional, let's say polymer or clinch knot, that weight doesn't cam, it just sits here. And so what happens is that weight pushes against the fish, fish's mouth, and it pushes their mouth open, and you have to depend on this coming loose and sticking. I mean, this hook's like razor sharp, but you have to depend on that hook just sticking in the fish's mouth. And a lot of times it turns to the side or it turns to the other side, whichever way they have it in their mouth. But when you have a cam action weight, and you have your weight on top of here, it doesn't matter if it's an eighth ounce, uh, 16th ounce, all the way up to, uh, I've had, I have weights up to two ounces. Um, and so you hit that cam, and you see how it kind of sits, the, weight, the, the line goes down through the eye like that? That's what makes it cam out or kick out. And I, a lot of times I catch them in the roof of their mouth or on the side of their mouth. I um, hardly ever catch them in the bottom of the mouth. But I guess that also depends on just how that fish has your bait positioned in their mouth. That's another topic we'll talk about later. And then when you want to get rid of your snail, you just go... That stuff's so hard. <laughs> go straight across it. See? Even cutting it, it still ain't breaking it. There it goes, finally. <laughs> That's some good stuff. If you ever get a chance to go on AliExpress to get some of that, that is some really, really, really strong line. All right, let me put this hook up. And these hooks here, uh, these, um, what's that, three off? These, like, these, these snail, the um, traditional, well, this is called the um, Southern Sprout Worm Hook. But all it really is is a Shaughnessy bend. This way this bend is right here, that's for Shaughnessy. I like these a lot. Um, I was using... Did I get any of the round... These are good, too. These drop shot hooks I have. Um, did I get any of the other ones? Give me one second. Me. I don't know if I got any of the round bins. I like the round bins for a certain few things. Um, I like the round bin fish in the fluke. I like the round bin... Um... um my mind kind of got with me a second. I'm trying to find the bag for this. <laughs> I put stuff places and I can't hardly find it. Um, is that it right there? No, that's not it. Okay. What I don't want to have happen is have this get in my finger sometime or another. Um... I didn't find it where it goes and I put it back in the box and I'm I'm rumbling through the box and I get a hook, a hook in my hand it is not fun oh this is a four this is not even a five I thought I grabbed one of the five alt ones well crap even that four alt one looks good in that crawl bait but okay let me get back some stuff in here um tackle warehouse and the 25 days of savings had um, tungsten Nico weights. And these were like, um, I think two bucks. This is, they had, this is a 3 64th. They had 1 16th. Um, 1 16th. I mean, I got most of the sizes I like to use for Nico rig fishing. 1 32nd. Uh, that's 1 16th. Now, these are here, the Brass Carolina Clackers. But I use these for different things, though. I'll have to show you that in another video. Um, like free rigging. I like to put these, one of these between my weight and my hook. Uh, just because, especially if you're using like a hook like this is a 4 alt Southern Sprout. Um, if you're using one of these and you um, you have your, your casting weight or your drop shot weight or whatever you have on it, you don't want 
that to get caught up on the top of your eye. And sometimes it gets stuck there and it won't go back off. I like these because these kind of sit between it. Uh, sometimes I use a bobber stopper to hold this in place or to hold or just hold it where it can't get through there. And it works wonders. I mean, it works really good doing that. Here's some more of those good drop shot hooks. I mean, if you haven't tried Eagle Claw lately, give them a chance. I mean, especially the prices. Like, if you can get them, like... I mean, everybody goes Trocar. Okay, here's my problem with Trocar. Trocar are a dollar to two dollar hook. Over a dollar hook. Almost two dollars a hook. In some cases, for like the bigger beast hook, it's like three dollars a hook. Not beast. I'm not... didn't mean to say beast, but that, that big Trocar flipping hook they have. Um, they're expensive. These are here like the six alt flipping hook. These are less than 50 cent. Actually less than, they're like, this pack was like $2. So if you think about that, um, and you get five hooks. I'm not scared to put this in anything. I ain't gonna worry about my investment. I don't have to worry about if I go across that tree limb or in those, uh, buy that boulder or whatever and the, the fish break me off. I just basically retie. I might lose a little bit of tungsten, but I try to find good deals on tungsten as well. And I'm always trying to find a sale. That's just how I like to roll. You find that good sale, and you ain't got to worry about it so much. Um, there's my rant on that. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I tried the tungsten. I really liked them a lot. They were a really good hook, but they're expensive. And... To be honest with you, they, these have the exact same keeper. Um, they are super sharp. Uh, I don't know if anybody even, even looked at these. These are the Eagle Claw flipping hooks. They have a very heavy gauge wire to them. Take a look at it here. Uh, sometimes I'll use a flipping hook like this. Mm. I'm a very strong guy, and this I can't bend it. I can make it flex, but if you can bend this out, I heard somebody talking about he bent one of these out on a hook set, and I fish these with 50, 65 pound braid. Um, if you're bending this out, A, you've used this for a long time and it's probably rusty, or B, um, <laughs> it's not on a fish, buddy. Let's don't joke yourselves. You're bending this shit out on a rock or a tree limb. Um, same kind of principle. Um, that's the top and there's the bottom. You're going to go in. You're going to pull the keeper. I like to keep the keeper kind of a little bit like that right there. It's kind of set it right on the back side of the bait. I like to look at my bait to see where it's going to line up. Now, this fits this bait a little better because the other one's a 4 alt. I didn't realize it was a 4 alt. That was a 5 alt. Um, what I like to do is just come right where you can feel that point because you're going to have a cam. I mean, you have your, your snail knot. But you see what I'm talking about? How this, on a smaller creature bait, how this kind of sits out a little bit more. Now, I mean, you can, if you want to, Bring it like this right here, pop your barb through, and then pinch it back. But it's, it makes it start tearing your bait up. Try to text pose it. That's why I like that tube hook, but it doesn't really text pose very good. Now, one thing I really like is um, pitching around um, Z Man uh, Palomino bugs and stuff. These hooks work perfect for it because they're so soft. You basically put your hook right there, right there. And you ain't got to worry about them tearing up. You don't really go through any baits. I'll show you a couple other tricks about some Z-Man stuff later on. But just wanted to try to show you that real quick. Let me close this up. Um, another thing I like to do in the wintertime... Even even more than just the winter time, this is a underspin that I found, um, and Discount Tackle just had them on sale as well. But Tackle Warehouse had them on sale, 
is this Mustad. As far as the underspin, they have one of the best keepers of any of the underspins I've found and one of the best price. And they have an awesome hook. I mean, what I like to do in the winter time especially is I'll put a, a pearl fluke on here. And you don't reel it in like you would think you would a bait. You put that pearl fluke on there. I say you're 15, fishing 15 foot of water. And I like how this has a flat bottom to it. It's very important. You're going to cast it out and you're going to let it go down to the bottom. You're going to flutter it up off the bottom. Then you're going to let it go back down and flutter it up again and let it go back down. Um, it is a fish catching machine. I really like these mustads. We got some more of them. More clackers. Um, now we're getting to some of the interesting things I wanted to try. Let me get this out first. And this is the Lucky Strike. These are the, the wake baits called a Cajun wake. I want you to be able to see this right here. That thing looks really odd. It looks three quarter of an ounce. But. I mean, I can't get over it. It just looks interesting. I got several different colors. I think they had these on sale for, um, I don't remember now. Oh, well, this one has a purple back. Sorry, hook got tangled up and everything. Oh, not purple, but pink. Oh, well, listen to that clack sound. That is very different. The most of the stuff you hear on the market. What is this here? Look, oh, let's see, where's it? Lucky Strike, Frantic Frog, Black Knight, uh, Cajun Wake Bait. These were uh, on sale for $4.89. Listen to how that sound is. Look at the flared out gills. I mean, it looks like a. I have aquarium, so I kind of know what this looks like. And it looks when a fish gets kind of near to when they're like their deathbed or death side. Sometimes they get like this bend in their back and their gills flare out a lot. Ow. Hooks are sharp. That's what this looks like. Uh, okay, and there's, there's eagle claws. All those eagle claw hooks were, were a dollar, dollar, nine, uh, dollar, dollar 49 to a dollar 99. So there you go. Now I have this. I'm looking at it. Um, all right. That looks really neat, though. Hmm. Just realized I don't see my T-shirt in here. Going in the bottom? Nope. It's not in here. Okay. Um, these are just the Ima poppers. They make a really good popper. This is a bone color. An occasion weight. I mean, it's just a really good popper. It's not... I wouldn't say it's... Uh, I mean, I'm always comparing... These are Jap Japan, Japanese design. I'm always comparing poppers to, like, the Ricos. Um, I really like the Rico a lot. I mean, they have really good colors. These are very similar to the Ricos. I mean, very similar. Um, but these were really good on sale. I've used these before. And, um, another thing they had on sale. This is the, um, I Am A Skimmer Grande. That's a really good wake bait. Now, this is one of my favorite things to throw. This is the big stick by I'm. Um, I've thrown this for about five or six years now. Uh, this is a big pencil popper is all it is. Um, they have really good colors for them. And they have very good walking action. One thing I like is it has all, they have chambers. Let's see if I can look at where you can see it. They have chambers all the way down the bait. And each chamber has like different rattles in it. So it has like a totally different sound than most pencil, pencil poppers. 
me see if I can get you to hear what it sounds like. It has a really nice uh, feather treble on it. Really good components. You can really see the big heavy weights in the end. They kind of make it sit down in the water. And this thing, you can see the nice cut mouth. This is one of the things I compare my, almost all my pencil poppers to. This is one of my favorites. Um, listen to this thing. Let me see if I can get these hooks sitting right. It has a lot of sound. Um, this, if you're looking to get in the pencil poppers, they have the big one, like this. Um, oh, come on, I'm going to get hung up. All right, they have the big, this is the big stick. Then they have the smaller one right here. This is just, just I'm a stick. Or a little stick. This is the bluegill color. Um, both of them work very well. A lot of times when they when companies try to upsize their or downsize their offerings, I guess in this case, um, one or the other doesn't work very good. And in this case, both of them work fantastic. Um, I especially love throwing this Ima stick, the big stick. Like that. He's the summer. Um, working across points and things. Um, there's my t-shirt. Another royal blue. This is Jinko Buzz Baits. I wanted to try this out. Uh, if you see it has like a little middle post here. Unless it's a spring, I mean. It just swings around and pings it. And it makes a ping noise. Uh, I don't like open it. That's kind of... <laughs> you kind of get the point. Gliders. There's one thing I want you to see in here. Where are they at? Well, this is the Lucky Strike, the, the Frantic Frogs. Uh, this is basically the exact same thing that Gambler used to make back in the day, the Cane, the cane Toad. Um, I guess you see Chris Lane's picture there. He basically brought this design over to Lucky Strike. Um, they feel very, very similar as far as texture goes. I've used the cane toads a lot. Um, hmm. Yeah, they feel about the same. A lot of people complain about these. They they say they kind of flop over in the water. That's because they're using just a single EWG hook. These are designed to either have um, a small bullet weight up at the, top, the front. But what I like better than a bullet weight is a keeled hook. A keeled, um, like a 2 or 3 out swim bait hook. Uh, or even um, having a, I call it a penny rig. Some people call it a Scooby. I think another guy on you on YouTube calls it a Scooby Doo rig. Um, basis where you take a small length of braid. Um, the braid gets tied to your hook. Um, let's see if I can try to find something to show what I'm talking about. Uh, it'll be for another video. Anyway. You take a small piece of braid, you drill a hole in the penny. Um, some people, you can either leave the penny, you can leave it flat. What I like to do is take it and I put it in the vise and I bend the penny in half. Where it kind of sits almost like a, has kind of like almost, not a 90, but like a nice curve to the penny. So the penny kind of has like a flash back and forth. But Or you can use a nickel, you can use a dime if you want to go lighter. Um... You can use a quarter if you want to as well. I mean, you could use any kind of thing you want to use. Um, I even have seen people use a uh, beer cap. Just because it's simple and easy to use. But it'll help kill this frog. You need a little bit of weight on the bottom of that hook to make this frog. Instead of, a lot of people say that it complains it turns upside down, the hook's here instead of on the bottom. Where it should be on the bottom going through the water. Um... There's lots of little things you, you can do to make them work right. Um, I've got black and white. And what is this? This, this one's called Watermelon Red. Uh, these were 99 cents, so I didn't really think it mattered that much. Some more Ned weights. Nico weights, I mean. More flipping hooks. Big sticks. 
one thing I wanted to show you in here. Where's it at? Skimmers. Clackers. Little sticks. Black frogs. Poppers. Huh. Let me go to my order for them. Hold on a second. Okay. They have been back ordered. I'm sorry about that. Um, well, I'm going to for this worm hunt. A lot of stuff was back ordered. Wow. Well, okay so whenever they do come in i will come back and show you what i'm talking about <laughs> all right well i guess i'm gonna go and wrap this video up now um feel free to ask any question you want to ask me down below um, um i feel like i'm kind of pandering to people like the see like youtubers do begging for these people to subscribe to my channel but i'm trying to make this I mean, I, I like to help people and show people what, how it, I do things. Um, I've been fishing tournaments for over 20 years. Um, I really enjoy it. I love fun fishing. I'm trying to teach, I'm doing my kids fishing all the time. I like just getting out there. I mean, it's like my favorite thing to do. And if, it, if you like these videos, please let me know. Uh, just leave a quick comment down below. I, I answer every comment. Um, you like the video go ahead and hit like if you don't like it you don't like it tell me what i can do better um i'm not a very i'm a i'm probably the harshest critic to myself you can't nobody can really bother me um well i'm gonna go ahead and end this video here please like comment and subscribe like i already said before i will catch you on the next one peace